Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University, looking at context and phonics. Know that the non-visual information versus the page is just as important as the visual information, the stuff on the page, in creating meaning with text when you are reading. And that's the goal of reading, not to sound out words, but to create meaning. By context, uh, uh, by non-visual information, I mean situational context, the situation you're in, story context, your life context, which includes the information in your head. Example, my wife saith unto me, Kim had a neck injury and had to go to the hospital. This was verbal versus uh, written, but we had just come from a picnic where her colleague named Kim was not there. So using the situational context, I automatically thought, oh my goodness, Kim who I know better than the Dancing with the Stars Kim, had a neck injury. Oh my gosh, I said. But she was dumbfounded when I said, when she, when I told her this, and she said, no, 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 it's the Dancing with the Stars Kim. I was using situational context, having just come from the picnic, and life context to help me understand this verbal sentence. Proficient readers use a minimal amount of visual information and a maximum amount of non-visual information. Know that the brain does not passively interpret data gathered by the eyes. Rather, the brain, what's in here, tells the eye what to look at, what to pay attention to, what data get to gather, which part of the words to, per to attend to. Visual perception, therefore, is more a function of the brain than the eye. For example, again, my lovely wife notices when something is out of place. Now, her eyes are probably worse than mine, but it's what is in the brain helps her to perceive certain things that I do not even perceive. Telling students to sound out words sometimes makes all the time it makes reading more difficult. It gives them the idea that letters and sounds are the most important thing in cueing reading or, or helping us discover what these words are. Heavy instructional emphasis on phonics encourages readers to use just one cueing system, that reliance on the graphophonemics. The graphophonemics makes the task of reading much more difficult. Using context reduces our reliance on graphophonemic cues. We use, it enables us to lock, uh, unlock the big ideas. And it's also why reading whole connected texts that make sense is best and makes it easier to learn how to read versus little bits of things that don't make sense and, and, and do not enable us to use context. Whole authentic text. Now, proficient and non-proficient readers can always read words better in context than in isolation. What does this tell us? Both can read a list of words, just a list, but there is no context. If they read the same list of words in context, they can perceive them and read them much better. Some tasks ask students to read a list of nonsense words to focus on uh, phonics, apparently. But there is no meaning to these nonsense words, and it makes reading more difficult. They do less well. In the real world, when we are practicing reading, words always appear in context, bink, and always have meaning. When we learn to read, we should learn to read in authentic reading situations. And number six, phonics should be taught, but not as a method of reading. It is not a method of reading. It is one cue system, one cueing system that we use to unlock uh, words. Teaching children to read simply by sounding it out, you provide a very inefficient reading uh, curriculum. Context should be the first uh, way, the first cue system used to identify words. What makes sense within the sentence? Sounding out a word, as I've said many times and will say again, is cumbersome and time-consuming. Using 
context enables us to identify words without, with only minimal attention to graphophonemic cues. And part three 